So one of the questions that I get a lot about using Google Analytics for relates to something that should be really straightforward and simple. And that is how do you change the granularity of a time series chart? So for example, if you're looking at a year's worth of time and you wanna change that between like daily, weekly, or monthly, how can you do that in Google Analytics 4? This is a really weird problem to have because this was a pretty basic function inside of Google Analytics 4's predecessor, Universal Analytics. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here we're looking at the interface for Universal Analytics. This is now gone, and as you know, Universal Analytics is no longer available. We're kind of going full steam with GA4. Now, when you looked at a basic time series line chart in Universal Analytics, there was this little toggle on the top right of the chart that allowed you to switch between weekly, monthly, hourly, etc. And so it didn't matter how much time you were looking at, whether you were looking at one month or two years of data, you as the data analyst had control over this feature. Now, if we hop over to GA4, there is no such control. No matter kind of where you are looking at the interface in these standard reports here, it doesn't really exist. Now, what Google seems to have done in the recent months is that they have added support for weekly granularity. For a while there, it was only daily, which meant that if you looked at a year's worth of data in your Google Analytics dashboard, it would show you daily level granularity, which is obviously not very conducive to seeing trends. It just shows you very, very volatile data. They have since now rolled out support for weekly, but there's actually just some really bizarre behavior happening with these charts. So for example, if I look at this chart, I'm looking at 30 days of data, and this is actually showing me one day granularity. So it just means that every point on this chart is a uh, one day time interval. Now, if I change this to say last 12 months using this preset option for last 12 months, it's going to open up this chart to a year's worth of data. And this chart kind of looks okay for one year because what's happened is if you look at the chart, it has changed to weekly granularity, which is good. I mean, I'd still want the ability to change it to monthly and there's no toggle here, but at least it's changed from daily to weekly. But there's also some just inconsistent behavior with the chart as of the time I'm filming this video. What I found is if I go back to past 30 days, it'll switch back to daily granularity. Now, if I chose the preset option for last 12 months, the chart will know to switch to weekly granularity. But I've noticed that if I manually select a time range that's say up to a year, so let me just change this from December 1st. Let's just choose a really long time range here and I click apply. And now what you'll notice is that it just sticks to that daily level granularity. It's a very bizarre behavior. So. What's happening is the charts seem to try to guess what granularity you want. Sometimes it works. Like I said, if you choose the preset option, it'll switch to a weekly granularity for a longer time range. But if I choose the custom dates, then it sticks to daily. All of this is just really frustrating. It creates a lot of friction because as a data analyst or even just a marketer trying to pull data from Google Analytics, this is not a good UI and it just creates these barriers to getting answers to your questions. So what I wanna show you now is how can you have more control over the granularity. And the trick to doing this is not in these standard reports here. So the area that I'm in right now with GA4 is called reports. And not everyone knows, but these reports like Lifecycle, Search Console, these are called collections. You can completely customize these. You can create new subsections and reports. I can't do it in this version. I'm using the Google Analytics demo account, and this will not allow me to edit this because I don't have admin rights. But if you have your own GA4 web property, you'll see a little edit button here, and it'll allow you to go in and change what dimensions and metrics are being shown. I have a full video on this on my channel. I'll link to it in the description. You can check that out. But it doesn't really matter for the reports because all of the charts in the reports do not allow you to toggle time series granularity. To do this, you have to go over to the Explore section, otherwise known as Data Explorations. So let's do that now. Let's go to Explore. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on blank here. And you can do this in the Google Analytics demo account. If you've never opened up the Data Explorations tool, it looks a little bit intimidating, but it's fairly straightforward. You essentially have three columns here. The variables column is where you essentially prepare your data so you can decide which metrics or dimensions or segments to import that will be then available in the settings column. And this is where you can kind of configure things. You can say, I wanna look at a table, 
table. I want to look at a line chart. You can add cross breaks. You can add filters and add metrics and all kinds of stuff. And finally, your chart or visualization or table will appear in this section. All we're going to do is we're just going to import one single metric here. So I'm going to go to metrics and I want to import sessions. You'll notice that you have access to all of the metrics here. So I can look at session based metrics like average session duration, sessions, etc. You can also just run a search. So if I just ran search for sessions. You can see that it's it's basically shortlisted all the metrics that have the session in it. And I'm going to check the little box to the left of the metric name there, and I'm going to click import. But note that you can actually import multiple metrics here. And you may want to do that because you have to import the metrics first before they're available in the settings column. But in this case, I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to import one single metric, sessions. And now that metric will actually be available down here for values. Values is where you'll add in metrics you've selected. Before we do that, though, I'm going to change the visualization type. It will default to a table. What I want to do is I want to click on line chart here. So this will allow us to create a time series chart for sessions. And what I'm also going to do is I'm now going to go to values and add the sessions metric that I imported. You will only see the metrics here that you've imported. So if you want more metrics, just go and add more of them here. And there we go. We've now got a chart here that is a basic time series. The cool thing, though, that happened when I clicked on the line chart visualization is that it added this new option for granularity. And this just means that when I'm looking at my exploration here, I can now change between different granularities. So for example, I'm, right now I'm only looking at last 28 days. So weekly doesn't really make a ton of sense for this, but I can actually look at a longer time frame here. So let's open this up a little bit. Click apply. And now you can see I've got a nice chart here that is on weekly granularity. If you're wondering what these kind of colored areas are, these are showing upper and lower bounds and it's showing you something called anomaly detection. Anomaly detection will just highlight when there are outliers in your data where sessions were either a lot higher or lower than you expected. It's good to have, but if you want to get rid of these call outs on the chart, you can just switch this off and it's gone. There are two things that I have to mention about changing the chart granularity here. The first is the amount of time that you can go back. You'll notice that unless you have changed this or your web ops admin has changed this, by default, you will only be able to go back two months in time. This is different from the charts that you can access in the report section that actually allow you to go as far back as you have data for in this web property. That's because the data that you get access to in the Explorer is actually different than the data you get access to in reports. The reports data is processed data and it's aggregated. It means that they basically severed a connection to the individual user ID event level data in your web property. And it just aggregates it. So you still get to retain that overall data, like average bounce rate, total sessions in a certain month. But in the variable explorer, you're actually able to access user level event data. And Google essentially has something called a data retention policy, which dictates how long you're allowed to retain the user event level data within your web property. And by default, that will be two months, which just means that in the explorations tool, this will only ever be able to go back back two months from the date that you're looking at this. You can extend that window by going into admin. I can't do this on this particular web property because I don't have admin rights. But when you click on admin, there's going to be a setting there called data retention. You click on that and there'll be a second option aside from two months, which is 14 months. So that means that you can collect 14 months worth of back data. But this will only start collecting that data from the point at which you make that setting. So what that means is that you won't instantly have access to the 14 months of back data. You have to collect it over time. So that's the first thing. Data retention is very important. I highly recommend that if you have admin rights and that setting is currently defaulting to two months, you right now go and make that change because even if you're not really using the Explorer much now, you might want to be able to have that data later on. And if you don't have admin rights, you want to talk to uh, whoever does within your organization, ask them to make that change. The next thing I want to mention, which is a a little bit annoying is that you'll notice that month is currently grayed out of the granularity, which is kind of really important. In this case, if I have a 14 month retention period and I want to look at monthly granularity of a chart, it is not available. And that's not just because of my account. This is all accounts appear to be like this right now. And I've noticed that on the Google Analytics community forums, there have been people that are asking about this. And it looks like it's not currently available at the time of me filming this video. In fact, before it looked like weekly granularity wasn't even available. You could only do hourly and daily. So I believe they added this after GA4 is officially launched. So 
I believe, or I'm assuming that at one point in the future, they may actually allow you to add monthly granularity for free accounts. Maybe it's there in the paid account. I don't have a Google Analytics 360 subscription. So maybe for paid users, it is there. But currently, monthly granularity is not an option, even if you have that 14-month data retention window. I'm hoping that because it's shown here as an option, it will eventually be added, but we'll see what happens in the future. But that's it. That is uh, kind of a, an introduction to the explorations to Tool. If you haven't really started playing with it in Google Analytics 4, it's actually quite powerful. Once you had wrap your head around it, it's not as intimidating as it looks. But this is also how you can bring back that toggle for changing the granularity of time series charts. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you liked the video, I'd greatly appreciate if you can give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.